What's going on guys? It's Simo. So today we're gonna be doing a card discussion on Inspector Border. This is one of the cards I was most looking forward to coming out of Extreme Force and then they rarely bumped it to Secret Rare but that's a completely different story. But Inspector Border is a really really cool card that is not only one of the most powerful stun tools we've ever seen in this game but has a lot of practical application being played outside of a deck that's completely centered around the card itself. But before we get into that I want to give a big shout out to my newest patrons as always. So big shout out to today to Darian as well as Nicholas. You guys are the reason that this channel is growing strong. And if you guys want to help support me and the channel through Patreon, then check out the Patreon link in the description below. But without further ado, let's go ahead and get right into it. So Inspector Border is a light level 4 machine effect monster with 2000 attack and 2000 defense with an effect that reads as follows. Cannot be normal or special summoned if you control a monster. Neither player can activate a monster effect unless the number of monster effects that player has previously activated that turn is less than the number of monster card types currently on the field, including Ritual, Fusion, Synchro, Xyz, Pendulum, and Link. If an effect's activation was negated, it still counts toward the total for that turn and only count effects that were activated while this monster was facing up on the field. So that was a mouthful. So we're going to go ahead and elaborate on this card a little bit, talk about its strengths as well as its weaknesses. So what does this all mean? Well, basically, Inspector Border basically just denies monster effects flat out. However, the caveat to that is if any player controls a monster of one of the specified types indicated on Inspector Border, then both players are allowed to activate one effect or effects less than the total number of those types types in general. So for instance, if one player controls a fusion monster, both players have the ability to activate one effect. Then if there's a fusion and a synchro monster on the field, both players can activate up to two effects, and it pretty much just keeps going on from there. However, the whole purpose of Inspector Border is to pretty much make it so that your opponent isn't going to play Yu-Gi-Oh whatsoever, so you shouldn't have to worry about it getting to that point. Inspector Border is basically like Majesty's Fiend Mini, if you want to look at it that way. Now, of course, Majesty's Fiend denies all monster effects and doesn't allow for anything, but Majesty's Fiend requires you to tribute a monster to get it onto the field, whereas Inspector Border requires no tribute and basically denies all monster effects, except for, you know, just for except for a slight few. But we're going to talk about how practical is this effect. We're looking at some of the top decks of this format as well as last format, let's take a look at something like Spiral for instance. So Spiral is a deck that does rely a lot on its monster effects, especially to get two Spiral monsters onto the field in order to make double helix and really just go off. Well turn one, if you drop Inspector Border, it's actually very difficult for your opponent to be able to do that because Spiral Super Agent is an effect that activates and if your opponent can't special summon him out to the board because Inspector Border denies that, then they're going to have a difficult time getting two monsters onto the field to make the Link monster, which then allows them to be able to use one effect since they control a Link monster, in this case Spiral Double Helix, to then go off from there. Spiral doesn't really have a monster in the deck that can really just kind of special summon itself out inherently like via Photon Thrasher or something like that, and as a result of that, it actually crumbles pretty hard under a card like Inspector Border. Then you look at a deck like Trickstar. Trickstar is a another deck that can be very monster effect reliant, especially with a card like Trickstar Candina. If Inspector Border's on the field and your Trickstar opponent isn't allowed to use Candina, they're not going to be able to search out Reincarnation to disrupt your plays, which also happens to be the way that they can out Inspector Border as well. And it also means they can't do stuff with Licorice, they can't do stuff with Lily Bell. It really just puts them in a very precarious position and it pretty much denies their ability to advance their game state at all. Then you look at a deck like Light Sworn. Light Sworn is another deck that Inspector Border can absolutely fucking cripple because of the fact that it's any deck that just requires so many monster effects to be used, Inspector Border is extremely strong against. If you look at a 60 card list of Light Sworn, Sworn, you see that two-thirds of the deck, if not more, is comprised of monsters. And so if they have no way to get multiple monsters on the field in order to make a Synchro and Xyz or a Link Summon, they're not going to be able to use any effects, and they're just going to be flat out 
fucked, and that's gonna put you in a very, very strong position. Now, another reason Inspector Border is so powerful is because it stops monster effects no matter where they activate. And this is, again, paying homage to Majesty's Fiend. It not only stops monster effects that activate on the field, but it also stops them in hand, in the graveyard, in the banished zone. This card doesn't give a fuck. It's going to negate those effects, assuming neither player controls one of the specified monsters on Inspector Border's card text. But you don't have to realize how powerful that is. The fact that this card can stop hand traps is huge, because if you're playing a deck completely centralized around Inspector Border, you're probably going to be playing stuff like Card of Demise to help replenish your resources, to keep tempo over your opponent, and control the game. The fact that you can play Card of Demise without worrying about it being hit by Ash Blossom is absolutely huge, and that means that you're going to be able to replenish your resources, your opponent is just going to be pretty much out-tempoed at this point, and that's what's going to basically secure you a win if you're playing an Inspect Border Turbo Protect the Style type deck. You have to also realize that this card stops graveyard effects, and going back to the aforementioned deck like Light Sworn, that's absolutely huge, because that means they can't resurrect a Trick Clown that gets sent to the graveyard, that means they can't banish a Damage Juggler to get something out of their grave, or anything else that might just help them advance their game state in that sense. They can't do anything like Banish for Mizuki, Giant Rex won't be able to trigger, Fairy Tail Snow won't be able to trigger. I could keep going on and on and on, but denying the graveyard recursion of a deck like Light Sworn or any deck for that matter that relies on the graveyard as a main source of its resources really puts the pressure on your opponent when they're staring down a card like Inspector Border. Now as good of a card as Inspector Border is, you have to realize that it's not the end all be all and that this card does have some pretty big weaknesses. First off, if you're not going first, this card can just be absolutely terrible because if your opponent is already established, then Inspector Border really isn't going to do anything as a whole, and that's a really big deal. So that means that if you're going second, you might wanna side this card out unless your whole deck is centralized around the card, but if you're going first, it might be a nice side deck card to throw in your deck to pretty much stun your opponent and can honestly seal you the win depending on the specific matchup. But let's circle back to some of the other decks we discussed. I mean, look at Spiral. So even though it's difficult for Spiral to get two monsters onto the field while under Inspect Borders uh, effect, you have to realize that they have plenty of tools to kind of work around that effect. They've got cards like Spiral Mission Assault, Spiral Mission Rescue, Spiral Gear Big Red, Monster Reborn, and a lot of these can be sent to the graveyard with stuff like Foolish Burial Good, so they're tutorable, which means they can special summon monsters without using a monster effect, and that means they can go into Double Helix, and then even though they still have to blindly call something because they haven't had any effects to reveal the top card of your deck, if they correctly call the card, they can just make something link up into like Deco Talker and run over Inspector Border pretty easily. Same thing goes for something like Trickstar. Trickstar Reincarnation happens to be an out because then they can get a second Trickstar monster onto the board. They can make something like Holly Angel, which happens to have the same attack as this card, but at that point they have a Link monster, which means they have more freedom in how they go about activating certain effects to deal with the Inspector Border as a whole. And then again, with something like Light Sworn, they have Brilliant Fusion, and they also have Left Arm Offering, so if they're desperate enough, they can search the Brilliant Fusion to get a Fusion Monster onto the board. Not only does that give them an effect to use, but that also gives them an additional Normal Summon as well, because that's not an effect, and that would be negated, because it's not an activated effect. So, they not only get an additional Normal Summon, so they have a lot of different ways, if Brilliant Fusion becomes live, to kill something like Inspector Border. So, even though the opponent might have to deplete a lot more of the resources, Sources than normal to deal with Inspector Border, it doesn't mean it isn't the end all be all in comparison to something like Majesty's Fiend, which is a lot more oppressive because it stops all monster effects as a whole, and that's a much bigger deal. Then you also have to consider there's a lot of decks that just don't give a fuck about this card at all because they either are pendulum decks, which is inherently flawed when it comes to Inspector Border, or they can just get big monsters onto the board without using monster effects at all. So Let's start with the predicted best deck of the format, Pendulum Magician. If your deck is 80% Pendulum cards, you don't have to worry about this at all because that means you're always going to be able to activate at least one effect per turn, and one effect should be able to allow you to kill this and proceed on with the rest of your play. You also have to realize the fact that if you have the Pendulum mechanic as a whole, you can just play scales 
pendulum summon your whole hand, and because pendulum magicians have access to basically every single type of monster in the extra deck, you're gonna have all the effects you want, and it's really not gonna be difficult for you to out something like this. Draco is also a deck that's seeing a resurgence in popularity, and Draco gives two fucks about this card because they can just set a spell or trap, tribute for something like Majesty Maiden, which happens to have 2300 attack. Oh, and look, you just happen to tribute one of your true Draco traps, which will pop this card because it's not a monster effect, and then you're just completely behind. So this is a card that you could actually maybe even side deck or even main deck in a true Draco strategy, since Draco doesn't really care all that much about this card being on the board, so that might be a little bit of food for thought. And then you've also got Dinosaur. I mean, Dinosaur has so many ways to out this as well. Double Evolution Pill basically just circumvents this effect altogether and gets you a 3,500 attack body onto the board. And even if you don't have double evolution pill, if you just get two dinosaurs in the graveyard, double or excuse me, ultimate conductor Tyranno is an inherent special summon. So it's not an effect to special summon him to the board. And that means you can just run over this thing no problem. And you really don't have anything to worry about from there. So overall, Inspector Border is an incredible card, but in the right circumstances. As a whole deck strategy, it's a bit of a protect this castle style strategy where, you know, if your pieces start to fall apart, your deck just crumbles under its own weight, and that really doesn't, you know, in terms of a consistent deck that's going to last you throughout a long tournament, that might not work as you get into the later rounds. However, I like Inspect Border as a side deck card against certain matchups that really don't have a good way to out a card like this. I mean, Plant FDK is a deck we don't have to worry about here in the TCG as of yet, but against that deck, since it's primarily all monsters, they really don't have a way to out this card effectively. And looking at some other decks like Light Sworn and other things like that, it can actually be rather oppressive in those matchups as well. And that's where I really like this card. I'd love to see this card be side decked against certain matchups, kind of like back in Majesty's Fiend, back in Monarch format, when people will just absolutely blow people out because they didn't have a card to stop it. But guys, those are just my thoughts. Let me know down in the comments what you guys think about Inspector Border as a whole. I'd really love to hear your thoughts. Guys, thank you so much for watching the video. Be sure to like the video as always. Subscribe to the channel for more amazing Yu-Gi-Oh! content. And if you found this video helpful, consider backing me on Patreon because just by pledging only $1 a month, you're investing in my ability to continue bringing you amazing Yu-Gi-Oh! content. So thanks so much again, and we'll see you next time.